Hi guys, we're here today to talk about clicker training. Have you ever gone to SeaWorld and watched the dolphins perform? You'll see the dolphin trainer will ask the dolphin to do a trick, then blow a whistle, and then the dolphin will come on over and end up getting a fish, okay? That whistle is a bridging signal telling the dolphin that you did good. That was a great behavior that you performed, and here is your treat. So every time they hear the whistle, they know they did good, and they know they're getting a treat. That is a form of clicker training. Now you say, well, why are we here with our beta fish? And I'm trying to find him. I think he's circled all around. Come on, buddy. There he is. So I can do the same thing instead of a whistle. I can use a laser. Okay, this is my bridging signal. Of course, I have my food. Okay, and I can go ahead. And he's coming around this way. He's a little feisty one. And I can go ahead and be ready with my food. Shoot the light. And then give him his food. And he's like, oh, look at that. Okay, so now what I've taught him is, I've just now introduced this. This laser pointer is his bridging signal. And he know he has food. And you see how he's going up there and eating. So there you can see, I've now started the process of teaching him about this bridging signal and then the food that comes after. I can start moving this laser and he will look for that food. And that can get him starting to move around if I want to move him around a little more. But again, it first starts with, I had to find him first, put the light on there, and then the food. Eventually I'll start moving and changing it up a little bit. Okay, this is the start of clicker training. Now clicker training is a long process. So you gotta be patient. And you have to have the right subject. So beta fish typically are ones you're only gonna feed them every other day. They are not very highly food motivated. Our guy actually did fairly well today. Um, but I will tell you, you probably wanna find a fish that's a little more food motivated, a little more interactive. Um, same thing when you're looking at other pets to do clicker training like a dog, you're gonna want a more food motivated dog. Um, and so we'll talk about that a little more. We'll demonstrate some other examples of clicker training in other types of pets and go through some of the ins and outs and things you wanna do in those first stages of clicker training. Okay guys, so we're gonna do a follow up here on clicker training and you hear about clicker training more with dogs than anything else. So here is your clicker. And you can, I'm gonna play the sound here in a minute, but I'm gonna wait till I get my dog. I got my treat, and then I have my dog. Now, if you notice, I also have Great Pyrenees, and you notice I have here, I've selected my Border Collie mix. Um, I've done my clicker training when we had our Australian Shepherds. Um, I, we did them, they worked out great. One of my first Aussies was wonderful. She could do all kinds of great tricks with the clicker training. I was working with her doing agility um, and did the clicker training. So she was a great one. This one, we have just now got him leash trained. So that's about as far as we've gotten him. But we haven't introduced the clicker training yet just because we're doing the basics of training for him. He's a young guy. You can see he's still even chewing on it. But this breed is a good breed to start with, the, the Border Collie mix. So Border Collie, Aus, Australian Shepherds, really great for that kind of stuff. So in the first stage of clicker training, you're gonna do what we call loading, which is exactly that, where I'm gonna click and then I'll immediately give them a treat. So then they start to link together, bridge together, the sound means treat, okay? And you say, oh, I hate having animals that are so treat seeking and obnoxious about it. What this does is it actually makes them have to think about it's not until that click I get the treat. So it puts boundaries on your treat giving. So again, if you're someone that over treats your animals, clicker training will even keep you in line too. So keep that in mind. So we do in the first stage is called loading. Again, notice I have my son here with me just because um, I've got to have my hands free because if you delay too much on your treat giving, then what's going to happen is they're not going to get that bridging part of it, okay? Hi, Jojo. And so I'm going to click, give them a treat, okay? So again, the goal is, any, <laughs> don't drop it. Um, the goal is, is to be able to click and then give that treat. Now you see, he's a little slower on the response. I probably could have used my Great Pyrenees lab mix. He's kind of a little bit of a pig. But again, we want to start there. One of the things I want to show you, so I have my treats kind of in my pocket, and you saw a drop there. 
A lot of people in the clicker training, and I had this when I was working with my one dog with agility, is a pouch. The other thing is, so these bacon bits can be kind of a little bit annoying, but this is what he likes. Um, but if you can do a smaller little bite-sized treat so it takes less time, that's even better because then you can really work on that loading. Um, and again, these break up real easily. Um, but if your dog is not excited about the treat, um, if they're not familiar with the treat, it's harder to really kind of attach that brid bridging signal. So those are some of the ins and outs. So like I said, as I get more into this and get the, the bridge connected up the sound, then I might go for a more smaller little treats um, because he's already knowing that sound. But for now, I'm going to stick with a familiar treat that he's used to um, and then have him work with that. So again, hi, Jojo. There you go. <laughs> and he drops it down. You can see he's not the most food motivated. But again, the goal is, is to get those connections together, okay, and keep working with them. Um, but like I said, if you've got more of a, a, a highly motivated, food motivated one, my Aussie that did, and you can see he's kind of looking around at it, my Aussie was a female. She was highly food motivated. Um, so you may find some differences, male versus female. I'll have to admit my uh, Great Pyrenees um, Border Collie, or Great Pyrenees Lab Mix, um, he's even a little more food motivated. Um, so that might be something else that might work a little bit better. Um, so again, selecting the right breed, the right gender, uh, and just the animal itself is a good part, okay? The one thing is he's a real pleaser. He's a really sweet, so he doesn't get too obnoxious that he kind of misses out um, on listening and tuning in to the, you know, to that clicking sound, okay? Um, so those are some of the things that you got to work with there. Okay, guys, here I'm um, talking about clicker training, and I've got my Park Great Pyrenees, which is probably not the most ideal breed for clicker training in dogs, but he is very mo food motivated because he's also part lab. In fact, he already sees the treats that are in my pocket. Now I've got my clicker here too. So the goal is he's never been clicker trained, and he's kind of an obnoxious dog about wanting treats. So the goal is, is that maybe I could start teaching him that the only way he's going to get his treat is if he gets a click. So let's try this, okay? And he ate it, so good. Okay, the goal is, is we're doing what's called loading. So I'm going to click, then give him his treat. See how happy he is about this, okay? Again, I'm gonna start with small sizes so he can eat them quickly. And I got my food ready. So and he's asking for it. Click, there you go. And I'm doing this loading, okay? He eats it small treats the smaller the better that way he can eat it quicker okay he sees he's waiting and then treat now i'm not going to he starts pawing at me or something like that i don't want to mark that behavior i want to mark the behavior of him uh-uh laying down he's not going to get it okay that's not the the behavior i want okay so again he wants the treats he's got to stand up come on smokey Come on, come on, you gotta get up. Come on, Spooky. You want the treat? You gotta get up. There you go, good. There you go, see how I taught him that? And he learned really quickly the laying over wasn't gonna work. All right, good boy. You want the treat? There you go. And he's actually, great parodies are not the best. Um, they kind of aren't the most food motivated, but that lab mix, we use labs or sporting dog breeds. So we use them all the time for training um, and hunting and those kinds of activities. So they're very smart. So you can see, and food motivated. So you can see he wants that food. He also wants to please. All right, Smokey, you want your treat? You gotta get up. Come on, come on, you gotta get up. There you go. Good, and I've marked that behavior. Notice that, very well done. Um, I've done this training with, so this is the first time he's met the clicker. I've done this training on my Australian Shepherd. She did an amazing job when we we're doing agility. Um, so he's not going to be the most agility dog, but I can teach him some behaviors I want. Like, for example, the laying over. You know, I want him to stand up and to greet me. Same thing, the pawing at me. I'm not going to mark that behavior, so I'm going to do that. Eventually, over time, he said, oh, what about the treats? 
he is so loving and so willing to do stuff. Even the good boy eventually, and I can mark that, can be his, his reward more than anything else. But he does love his food. All right, guys, so clicker training for horses is a little different than clicker training for your dogs, for example. Um, you notice, first of all, that we're at the stall or barn. I've got my horse, Chippy, in here. We're gonna utilize him today. Um, and so he's in the stall, okay? Because if a horse gets obnoxious about treats, um, you want that boundary there, okay? Um, you also want their natural curiosity to take over because instead of loading, which we do in the dogs, where we just click, treat, click, treat, click, treat, here what we're gonna do is called targeting, where I'm gonna use the cone, he's gonna touch the cone, then he gets a click, and then he gets his treat, okay? So I got the clicker, the cone, and then the treat, okay? Again, you gotta be multifunctional with your hands. This takes a lot of eye co hand coordination, which I don't have the best of, um, but this is the way to do it. That way you've got the boundary. If they get too pushy about treats, uh, unlike a dog where you can kind of control it, here what you can do is just step away from the stall. That way they won't get too pushy. I did pick my more highly motivated animal, my, my horse, my gelding, um, just so that we could try to get a response. These guys have not been clicker trained. Um, so again, that's the one thing there. But again, he can get a little pushy, so I'm not, that's why we're gonna start first at a stall and kind of work from there. And again, like I said, the target is being the cone. So once he touches the cone, then I'll click, and then he'll get a treat, okay? All right, so chippy, chip, chip. All right, touches, then treat, okay? So again, he's kind of, oh, oh, so we touch, then he gets a treat. So the goal is, is to teach him the cone is when he gets that treat. Touch, treat, okay? And I can move that cone around to teach him that, hey, this is, you gotta do something to get it, okay? So this is targeting. So I'm gonna move it over here. He's gotta touch it, treat, okay? We're gonna move it up a little bit higher and see if we can get him to do a little more. He's gonna have to follow the, the cone. He's like, wait a second. There you go, he got it, okay? So again, get some more treats. Chippy, you're doing a lot better. He's like, wait, I know there's treats there. So I'm gonna get us the treats. We'll move around again. You can see he's looking. He's like, I know there's treats involved. But again, notice with the stall, this makes it really safe for me if he starts to get really pushy, okay? Again. I might bring it up. He's looking for the tree, and he touched it. All right, good, okay? So again, and even if it's an accidental touch, it's still a touch, and that's kind of the goal, is that we want him to accidentally kind of figure it out and then go from there. All right, do it again. And then he gets a tree, okay? One of the things is, is that you'll notice that instead of him going after me, is that he can go after the target, touch the target, instead of trying to bite at and nip at me, okay? So he's still got to look at it like, wait, I want that target. I know that means something. But I can do that. And the same thing, as he gets pushy, I can step away from it. That's why we do it in a stall first, teach him about that target and work from there. Now, similarly, once we get to a certain point, and look, he's kind of giving up now. We can move that target around, like if you want to teach him like trailer loading, you got a young horse, you can start with targeting here and then have them slowly start moving with that um, cone to where they need to go. So into the trailer, maybe over trail obstacles, things like that. Now, a lot of your clicker training is done from the ground. You can eventually, and more ex, you know, experts in clicker training can even do it from on top of the horse but it takes a lot of time to kind of build up to that point. But eventually you can get to the point. Same thing with the horse that's really not as food motivated. He's super food motivated, as you saw. Um, if you have a horse that just likes praises, like scratches or something like that, you can do that instead of uh, treats, okay? Um, but again, you want to start with that bridging signal, 
okay? And in horses, you'll have a target where in the dog, you won't need that target. Because again, you want for safety reasons, that target is gonna be necessary. But uh, you can use this in a bunch of different types of animals, but it just takes patience, the right animal, and time.